Where will the next trillion dollar company be founded? Investors are increasingly looking outside Silicon Valley to cities across the U.S. with cheaper cost of living. A recent journal article highlighted the growth of new businesses in Atlanta, Georgia, and census data shows them outpacing the rest of the country, along with places like Mobile, Alabama, and New Orleans. Here to discuss in today's Tech Check is Duncan Davidson. He's co-founder and general partner at Bullpen Capital. It's good to see you, Duncan. Do you experience this where you are? Oh, I think that story got it exactly wrong. It might have been okay a couple of years ago, but now, no, no, no. Everything's <laughs> coming back to Silicon Valley because of AI as you started the okay, whole Okay, but, but wait a minute. Let me, let me just to come to their defense for just a moment. <laughs> Can both things be true? In other words, are we seeing a real boom in startup activity elsewhere across the country at, and also at the same time seeing AI kind of revitalizing the original Silicon Valley? Well, you must understand, I love startup culture, and I've spent time around the whole world trying to generate startups in various communities. It's a very different question of whether you can diffuse startups and whether Silicon Valley remains the center. I agree. Uh, we've seen other places, like uh, Nashville seems to be a nice spot to consider starting, but none of these places can challenge the center. And the idea that a trillion-dollar company is going to emerge out of Atlanta, I just don't see it. What about, so C I think, what about I think Seattle? We're, what about Seattle? Not anymore. Now, Seattle's got hope because Microsoft, your last segment is spot on. Microsoft may be the new leader because it's so well positioned in AI as opposed to Apple. But I don't think Seattle's a place you're going to see it. Uh, right now, all this main activity is happening down here. Why, why, do you, why do you not think Seattle is going to be a place that is going to see that kind of development? They've got Amazon, biggest cloud company on earth. They've got Microsoft, maybe number two in cloud. And, and they're both going to play very heavily in AI. We have had companies up in Seattle, and they have a hard time in Seattle. They've actually, one of them moved out to Nashville. It's just too hard up there. Mm. But the center of AI work, open AI, which Microsoft is so close to, is down in the San Francisco area. And that's why. And this is how it always happens. Whenever a new factor production comes in, like PCs or the internet, everything centers where the core of it is. Because, well, let me ask you, have you read Elon Musk, the, the book about Elon Musk that just came out? Fantastic book by Walter Isaacson. Mm -hmm. Hardcore. He is an advocate. You've got to come together. You've got to not be remote, but in a building, and you've got to work hardcore. Yes, he's spot on about that. And that's happening in the AI world down here, not in the diffused world out there. Let me ask it to you this way, Duncan, because one other effect we saw accelerate during the pandemic for sure was just a boom in startups, period. Now, maybe you could say we don't know if all those are going to pan out yet, but the mix of software, and remote working is, and maybe you could throw AI into the mix, I mean, maybe the software, you know, is that inherently causing us to have more creative destruction, more startups? So yes, Atlanta gets more, yes, Mobile, Alabama gets more, yes, the Acela Corridor gets more, you name it, that there's kind of just more of this activity in general, and, and maybe the business models are easier to scale these days because you can, you can take eight or 10 people and all of a sudden have a really interesting startup. You don't necessarily have to be in just one part of the country. You can find great startups all over the place. I agree with that. Our own portfolio used to be about 50% San Francisco area, and then it diffused during the COVID and the lockdowns to be broader outside and not in the center, but it's coming back. I think that what you want to think about is that we just came through an historic bubble. It may have been caused by the Fed keeping interest rates too low too long, and certainly the lockdowns led to remote work. But a historic bubble always makes people think it can happen everywhere. But when the bubble's over, people recenter, and that's what we're seeing right now. We're coming back home again. I assume you will say it was ever thus, but California has <laughs> serious fiscal problems right now and major deficits, and their taxes are very, very high, and they're talking now... Uh, according to a report we had on yesterday, of instituting potentially a wealth tax. Would that in any way dampen the supremacy of San Francisco and the Valley in, in what we've been talking about? There is a point at which we're going to kill the golden goose, and you may be right. We may be getting this close to it, because a lot of people I know in net worth are bailing out to lower tax states. But I don't, I don't think people really believe that the current administration in California really destroyed the thing. They might, but they don't really believe it's going to happen. How would you describe, Duncan, the general state of activity in San Francisco and, and the vibe out there there in Silicon Valley and kind of in the whole region these days? Obviously, it reached a nadir during COVID, but it sounds like you're saying, you know, it's coming back. 
Somewhat. Uh, San Francisco's a mess. I mean, the fact Gavin could clean it up for that big summit in a couple of days and let it go back downhill again, the priorities these people have are completely wrong. And so parts of the city are still a war zone, and nobody wants to go there. But there are parts that are very healthy. And when I say San Francisco, I'm really saying the whole Bay Area. Mm -hmm. This is not just the city phenomenon. It's all the way down the peninsula. But you are so, seeing, and maybe you can give us an example. I don't know how active you are in, for instance, the AI space in particular these days. But are you seeing a raft of new business formation, you know, people, uh, people renting out, you know, office space across that area? I mean, things like that? Well, Y Combinator is a huge factor. And I think in their most recent cohort, it went from 20% AI base to 60%. And these are all being spun into areas around the San Francisco area. So yes, we're seeing a big take pickup. The data I've seen says in the last six months, seed and series A deals have been twice as many in the, this area than anywhere else. New York's number two, Boston's number three, but it drops off really fast. So yes, you can actually see in the data, it's recentering here. That's really interesting. Fascinating. Really, really interesting stuff, Duncan. Thank you so much. We appreciate it.